Welcome back to DVC Weekly. This is episode 161. My name is Jay Serpleding. I'm the broker of buy and sell DVC. I'm trying to talk quieter. And I'm here with Scott. You don't have to whisper. He talks so loud that it picks him up in my mic. So, I mean, he's, 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 a, he's a loud gentleman. And I'm the owner of DVC rental.com and buy and sell DVC.com. So, don't have to whisper. It's okay. And today is Mark. It's painting with Bob Ross Day. Today is March 6, 2024. 11th month window is going to be February 6, 2024. And then the 7th month window is October 6, 2024. We're going to go right into the buy and sell side of things. Last week, we discussed the poll where how far in advance do people yes. make reservations. And I believe the number was like 63% of the people mm-hmm. make the reservation right. over seven months. So you would think that would mean that a lot of the people are just staying at one resort. But because yep. if unless they own multiple contracts, you, if you only own one contract and you're always making a reservation seven to 11 months in advance, you can only stay at one place. Absolutely. But <laughs> this week, the question was, as a DVC owner or DVC renter, I have stayed at only one DVC resort. That only got seven votes or 2% of the votes. Two to three, res- two to three resorts, 13%, 45 votes. Mm-hmm. Four to six resorts, 29%, 97 votes. 97 votes for four to six resorts. More than six resorts, 54%, 182 votes. Wow, okay. So if you take 54... 64, 74, 84, 83 percent of the of the voters have stayed in four or more DVC resorts. That kind of contradicts last week. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, this to me this is the beauty of Disney Vacation Club. I don't want to get too excited, but um, I mean, if you you know if you're just getting involved and in, uh, interested in DVC, just I mean, you're probably going to be bouncing around to other resorts. So don't get too caught up in which resort should I own because unless you're going to make the reservation seven to 11 months in advance, I mean, if I was looking into it, you know, you may want to, because again, this is 2024, you may want to eliminate the 2042 resorts, just jump up to the 2054 so you have more years. You're looking at Saratoga, you're looking at Animal Kingdom, you buy those points, you start making memories, you start bouncing around, you start having fun, you meet Scott at the resort, you do a food review. I mean, your whole life can change just like that. You can just you're start making that. memories. I'm, I'm excited. He's pumped up. He's pumped up this morning. I mean, just think about DVC began 91, 92, the concept. You're going to buy. I mean, I fell in love the first time I discovered DVC, October of 99. You're going to buy points. You can use these points here. You can say one night. You can say in a two bedroom. You can go here. You can go here. The concept, for the most part, hasn't changed since then. And if you were to change it, I don't think. I mean, obviously, Disney could open up a new resort and they can completely. You know, change how it works. They don't do that because guess what? It works. It's yeah. a simple concept that just it just works amazing. Everything works out. So I'm excited. I don't know, man. I, just you got to buy in. You got to use the points. You got to rent points. You know why? You know, don't be. I, I want to reach out to these seven voters who voted that they've only stayed at one DVC resort. I'm, I'm hoping that they're all new. And they're just brand new and you've just sold them contracts and that they haven't stayed anywhere else yet. I'm sure they're not. I'm sure there's somebody in here. A lot of times I'll see the old Key West, the people bought in old Key West, like always stay at old Key West, but try different resorts. They're also different. They're all magical in different ways and they're fun in different locations. So it's like, I understand people get comfortable and they maybe only want to stay at the same place, but that's the great thing about DVC is the flexibility that you can stay wherever you want. So to the seven of you who voted at only one resort, please Branch out and try something different. You never know what you're going to like. And I mean, again, you know, ne- I mean, I mean, just to defend those people. I mean, I guess if you, live, I'm not violently attacking them, but I mean, I guess if you live, it's not like they did the whole Disney Garden Rock series, and I'm if, not yelling at them. If you live in another part of Hawaii, maybe you're using it to stay at Alani. Okay, that a couple times a year, and you don't want to, you know, fly into the stairs. 
Or maybe mm-hmm. if they're at Disneyland and just bought a Grand Californian and they haven't traveled to Disney World in 10 years. Or maybe in North traveling. Carolina, you just like going to Hilton Head in the summer. You know, Hilton I'm just throwing it out there. I mean, again, it's just yeah, I guess the range of Disney Vacation Club. And the- if it's geographical, sure. But if, if you if you own at Saratoga Springs and you only stay at Saratoga yeah, right, Springs. Right. That's what I would be shocked about. Try somewhere else. Yeah, I mean, you got to, <laughs> I mean, to me, especially if you're going to the um, resorts in Orlando, I mean, you have to get an Animal Kingdom Savannah view. At least once you had membership. Absolutely. That, first thing I did. To me, that has to be checked off your bingo card or whatever they call it. I told you, the, the first rooms I ever booked were the value views at Animal Kingdom. And we have to have a Savannah view. And you, you have to try the... There's, there's nothing like waking up in the morning, walking outside, and there's giraffe outside your room. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you, you have to try it. Even if you love old Key West, that's where you've always, always stayed. You, you're absolutely right. Of any resort, you've got to get a room overlooking the savannah at Animal Kingdom. Just try it the one time because it's just such a cool experience. And if you have, if you happen to be traveling with kids under seven, it's even better. Yes. It's even better. Um, and now we're on to the food review of the week. Come here, I'm going to eat you. Get in my belly. So for today's food review, I am back at the Backlot Express at Hollywood Studios. And this was the reason that we went the first time with my family was to try the Wookiee Cookie, which is their like most famous dessert there. It's two oatmeal cookies with vanilla cream filling with a milk chocolate Wookiee stash. You know, this from Chewbacca, a Star Wars themed. The cookies were really thick, especially around the edges. Like they're probably a good inch or so thick. And I was hoping they'd be nice and soft, but they were like hockey pucks. Uh, there was really no way to bite into the cookie. I had to try to break it in different pieces to eat it, and even that was difficult. Um, if you had tried to bite into it, you probably would have broken a tooth on it. The frosting was fair. Uh, it would have been much better if it was like a cream cheese frosting. I shared this with everybody in my group, including my wife, who loves oatmeal cookies, and everybody that was with us disliked it. Uh, definitely wouldn't get it again. 3.1. The best thing about this cookie was that just a little piece of chocolate, that's like the little um, sash of Chewbacca on there, just the little chocolate, you know, tiny, thin little piece that was on there was the best part of the cookie. The rest of the cookie was almost inedible. Really, really bad. And uh, now we're (laughs) on to the DVC dash rental side of things. So, oh my gosh, are we about to get cruise info? Do you want a cruise? I didn't go on a cruise. Oh, okay. I, I, I have two cruises booked for this year so far. And I want to mention that if you are a DVC member and planning on taking a cruise, you, you really don't want to use your points to try to book a, a cruise, especially through Disney, because they charge so many points. It's much, much better. You're much better off renting out your points and then taking that money. And we can take that money and we can actually put it towards any, essentially any cruise line for you. Um, the ones that we always... Mentioned, you know, Norwegian, Royal Caribbean, Disney, Holland America, Princess, um, Celebrity. These are also the ones I've, I've done in the past several years. And we could also book Carnival. Truthfully, I don't push Carnival because I, whenever there's some sort of issue at sea, it's almost always Carnival. So I try to get our clients to not do the Carnival. Plus, also, when you use your points to book the cruises, it will help you on your taxes as well. Because we take the, the money from the, um, the rent, as a DVC member, we take the money from the rental and just apply that to the cruise for you. So helps out with taxes as well. Um, you also don't have to be a DVC member to book cruises. We are a, a travel agent as well. So we can book all the cruise lines for you. Um, so we can take care of all that when, you know, whether you're using points or not. It's, we're a small family run company. So we always appreciate it when you book your cruises with us. Um, if you happen to have booked a cruise in the last 30 days, technically we can, you can always transfer it over to us and we can take over everything for you to help you out. There's never a fee to use our service at all. Um, the cruise lines pay us a small commission, which is how we make money on the cruises. So again, always appreciate it if you do your cruises with us. You know, Whether you book direct from Disney or you book with us, it's the same exact price. It's just that Disney doesn't have to pay out the commission to anybody. So... Again, always using a small company, whether it's us or another travel agent, 
if you're able to use another, if you're able to use a travel agent, always go through them because it does, it helps out a, a small family who's trying to, you know, make a living doing travel agent work. That's all I, all I really had. I mean, I will add that on the NCL. Yes. If you go on NCL and uh, I'm probably going to, I can't think of what it's called at the moment, but you go on NCL and when you're on the ship, they say, well, if you put down a deposit, um, let's say you put down $250 and you get a hundred dollar credit on this cruise. If you put down two deposits of 500, then I think it, not, I think it jumps up to 250. Um, and that is, I don't know what that term is called with NCO. I can't think. I think, yeah, they all have some sort of like, you know, sale back program type thing where right. you, can, you can book it, put a placeholder in advance and then come back, you get a discount and then book it with us. Just, if you've put a placeholder for the last 30 days, you can transfer that over to us and we can take over your booking and you'll still get the same exact discount that you would have through the cruise line as well. So we we put down, we used to always put down the deposits with NCL. We did that in 2019. That's the last cruise we've been on. And then it was supposed to expire in 2021. Well, then of course, you know, COVID hit everything. Well, then they were like, oh, we we're going to extend it to 2022. And then again, it, things, things, however things worked out. And then they just said, oh, we're going to extend it until 2023. So then I was trying to, um, I think it's called a certificate with them. I was trying to sell these certificates to someone else because oh. we weren't going to go, right? Mm. And then I could never find a buyer in the transaction. I was always worried about getting scammed. And then NCL, now they just made it so these things don't expire. Oh, nice. So if you have one of these with NCL, which I'm assuming they can use and still book the cruise with you, uh, use that, then just know that your certificate's never going to expire. It's good until it's good until cruises don't exist 400 years from now. It's, <laughs> it's not going to expire. Yeah. So, are so you, that you was can, good. You can use a certificate at some time. So the thing is, is it, right? I know you've got 18 Vero trips booked for this year, but listen, drivers, your family and your children are just, they're more advanced than my children <laughs> because my children like when you let let's, let's say you go on a cruise and let's say you go to the Caribbean, I feel like we've you know we we've done all that we've done the you know what's the Stingray City, Southernmost Point, Hemingway's House, uh, Dunn's River Falls, swim with the dolphins. I've done all these. I haven't swam with dolphins yet. So I've done most. It's like you've done all these things, and now now you go on a cruise, and it's like if you want to go to the beach from eleven till two, you got to meet in this theater at ten a.m. You got to wait an hour. So. I don't think that we're going to visit. I, I can see my kids once they turn 18, 19, they're like, hey, I'm going to go on a cruise with four of my friends. My wife and I say, hey, we're going to go on this cruise, a nine-day cruise, because then you're going to have less kids on the cruise. So I don't think we're going to be using them any time. Again, my family, you know, when you when you get that ball on the tee and it's in the right spot, you can just, you know, Vero Beach right now. Vero Beach is your just, T-ball. Yeah, it's just working out perfect for our family. I don't want to mess it up. My kids look forward to going back. So I will ride that out until that train comes to a stop, I think. Because the other thing is I didn't mention is I don't get bit there. You know, there's a lot of people that's, that get that's crazy. bit there. Yes. I don't Everybody get I know there. gets bit from the noceums at Vero Beach. So he's got something in his blood that keeps the noceums away. I have AB negative, which is only 1% of the population. I think that they don't even know that I exist, apparently. I'm not even, I'm not even real to them. I'm taking this back here. As I said, I'm talking to the, these, the seven voters who only go to one DVC place and they don't expand their horizons. And then you come out here and you say, I've got the Vero Beach on the T. We're all, we love this place. We're not going anywhere else. How, 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 how am I going to yell at them? But I've been to the Inner Kingdom, I've been to Saratoga, I've been to Bay Lake. I know. And We're you've, right. all, you've also done a lot of cruises and you've yeah, been to all cruises. these places that you named, Stingray City and Dunn's River Falls. Dunn's River Falls, for the record, is in, in Jamaica. That was cold, cold water. I went there on my honeymoon. My wife and I. Which is what month? That was in June. June. It was cold? It was freezing, freezing cold. And you're, you're climbing up the waterfall. And there's no ropes. There's no safety stuff. It's literally just hold on to the person next to you and you form a human chain climbing up this super slippery waterfall that everybody is falling down and all, all of our knees are cut up and everybody's hurt from falling on this thing. And the water feels like it's like 60 degrees. So it is. it feels ice cold while you're walking up this, you know, it's 85, it's 90 degrees out and the water's like 60. It is freezing, freezing cold. 
So just throwing it out there. If anyone wants to book a cruise that goes to Jamaica, please let us know. Is that still a hot spot on the cruise line? Don't you I think so, yes. Yeah. Stingray City? I forget. I don't even know. The Cayman Islands. Cayman Islands? Cayman okay. Islands is Stingray City. There's also one in Bahamas. They have a Stingray City as well. But we, we did the one in Cayman Islands. And that's where, they, did they teach you the, sting, the Stingray Shuffle? Yes. You don't keep your, yeah, keep your feet on the ground and just do a shuffle along the bottom so that way you're not stepping on possibly any spikes. And then Southernmost Point, Hemingway House. We did Southernmost Point this past year for the first time. We walked past Hemingway House. We didn't find a need to go in and see cats. See his cats? I don't know. I mean, see his cats. So cats outside the house. I love when the, I mean, I don't love, I shouldn't say the word love, but when a hurricane comes to Key West, like their biggest concern is how is the Hemingway's cats doing? Really? <laughs> Okay, we've uh, really uh, veered I'm off there. this way. <laughs> but, uh, but let me ask you this. Have you ever been on a carnival cruise? Yes. Oh, I've, you have? I've been on two carnival cruises like 20-something years ago. Huh. They were decent. I, I had a very nice time on the carnival cruise, but they've just they've gone downhill. So that was all, wait, was that in the 2000s or the 90s? 2000s. 2000s. Early, early 2000s. I met my wife in 2000, and we did carnival cruises within the pe- in the first, like, Five years. We did two in the first five years. And liked Carnival Cruise Line. And we on our honeymoon, we branched out and did Royal Caribbean because it's supposed to be like more upgraded, but nicer cruise. And uh, we got a um, a veranda view for the first time, the balcony room. And we didn't like Royal Caribbean as much at that time. And we were like, oh, I really liked the Carnival better. But now it's just Royal Caribbean is fantastic. And Carnival, which again, I haven't done in 20 years, but everything I've seen online, whether... If there's a fire on a cruise line, if there's toilet problems, if there's fights, if some, if somebody jumps off a cruise drunk, eighty percent, ninety percent of the time it's carnival. <laughs> so it's like, and I, I've got friends. We got the Lee family, who I, I mentioned a couple of weeks ago. I had um, lunch with them at Kona Cafe. They go on carnival all the time. And they love carnival, but just it's those things that I'm sure most carnival ships are perfectly fine. Just whenever there's some sort of issue. A, a smokestack, whatever it catches on fire, it's always carnival. Because I don't know, because the thing, I mean, again, I don't know if we should just cut this off, but like Royal Caribbean, I associate that with, um, I can't think of what it's called, but they have the surf thing. The flow rider? Flow rider. Mm-hmm. So I associate Royal Caribbean with flow rider because mm-hmm. I know there's some people that are just, they love it, their kids love it, they come on with their own board, they're on the flow rider. Uh, Norwegian Cruise Line, you know, they, if you go back to like 2005, six, you know, they're freestyle cruising. You don't have to come at a certain time. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the, what the carnival, like if they have a, what they're, what they're known for, I guess. I don't know. Uh, carnival, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, I'm not trying, no, I'm not looking for you to be negative. I'm saying. But carnival's always been known as like the party ship. It's, it's, it's more of like if you've got guy, people in their 20s, bachelor parties, whatever, because they're, they're inexpensive, you know, drink. Like it was, that was the party ship. But it was always, it was always good. Now it's, it's still, it's still known as the party ship. Like, do they have a, do they have a thing like, and, and then also now Norwegian has the, um, you know, the go karts. Mm-hmm. Like, does Carnival have a, Carnival has like a flow rider or the, I think yeah. they, just water the, Their biggest ship and the newest one is the Mardi Gras, which has um, go karts on that as well. I oh, did? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. One of them's got, maybe it's Mardi Gras, it's got a roller coaster instead, like a small roller coaster. Oh, really? Maybe that might be Mardi Gras. But uh, they've got some cool stuff too. Like, I, I wouldn't mind checking out the, you know, if I was going to check out a ship, I'd check out the Mardi Gras one because that's the biggest and it looks like it's got some cool stuff on there. But just whenever there's some sort of crazy incident, and are they, are they at this is carnival? <laughs> are they up to speed on dining? Meaning, do they have a freestyle option too? Is, I, I honestly, I don't know. Cause you're I, the travel agent, man. I, I, Jeez. I don't do carnival. And I, I, I try to, you know, so it comes to us and says, Hey, should I do carnival or Norwegian or Royal Caribbean? I'm going to push them away from carnival because <laughs> I'm not experienced with it. And it's, there's always some sort of issue. So no. that, that's the reason we haven't, we, we, we've gone on averaging two cruises a year. You know, we, we, we have not gone on Carnival at all. It's, we've never even really looked at Carnival just because it, there's always some sort of craziness. And I just, I don't know. I just, I haven't, maybe, maybe I should take a Carnival trip so that way I could talk a little more intelligently about it. But I've just, every time I see some sort of crazy issue on Facebook where there's videos going viral, it's on Carnival. And is the majority of yours out of Port Canaveral? Ye- nah, yes. Like our personal trips? Hey, when you went yeah. on the cruises? Most of them have been at Port Canaveral. We Miami? No, we have not. We, I went out of Miami 20 years ago. Okay. Port Canaveral, um, we went out of um, 
like Fort Lauderdale area as well. And then we've done some Europe trips. Okay. We should have gone out of Rome. And we've got another one that's going to be going out of um, England this year, out of, Lon- well, out of London. Even though it's not really London, London's in the middle of England. It's actually off the coast. So it's like an, it's Southampton. So, but most of them have been out of Port Canaveral just because it's nice and convenient. You know, we live an hour right. from Port Canaveral or a little bit less, 50 minutes. And it's just nice and convenient. And a lot of the ships, I mean, I know Royal Caribbean, NCO. Uh, I'm assuming like all of these have a celebrity. Port in- I believe so. Ce- they they do. Celebrity did not. We wouldn't ask Celebrity out of the Fort Lauderdale area, but I believe this year Celebrity is going to be having one of their ships go out of Port Canaveral as well. Fantastic. That's the first time out of Port Canaveral Even for better. Celebrity. This is why you guys just got a vacation here, book your trips, go on over to Port Canaveral, go on the cruise. Mm-hmm. Let us know your reviews on Carnival. There's got to be some good stories out there. I want to hear them. Yeah, I might, I might, get, flamed, now, I might get flamed a little bit because I'm sure, you know, I'm sure. As you, I want to go on Carnival now. <laughs> as you know, most of the Carnival ships, you know, come come back without incident. You know, you know, as you know, there's 30 Carnival ships, you know, out at any given moment. And odds are none of them are having an issue. But just whenever there's some sort of issue, it's just always Carnival. And if they have a roller coaster like the Barnstormer, I'm in. Yeah, this is like what's this? Is a picture, picture, an air, picture an airline. Say, um, you know, JetBlue's out there, and JetBlue has, we'll say, we'll say, two mechanical failures in the last year, and nobody else does. And you go, I'm not, I'm not flying JetBlue. And you go, they've had thousands of flights and two mechanical issues, or three mechanical issues. You so odds are you're perfectly fine. However, if every time there's a mechanical issue, it's the one airline. You're going to be a little leery of them, even though thousands have gone off without problems. You go, well, there, there's been three issues, and every time it's been the same airline. So, and again, nothing has happened with JetBlue. I'm just using it as an example. But he's trying to throw out as many companies as possible to I, get in trouble. And I, I really do like JetBlue. It was the first one that came to mind. I was looking for something a little smaller. I didn't want to say like American, which is like huge. It's a JetBlue, smaller one, which I absolutely I do love JetBlue. So, let's end this before we get sued, please. <laughs> We'll see you next week. Let us know what please, kind of cruises you've please, done. Please, please come back. I, I, I'm sorry for the music issues. I'm sorry for the carnival issues. I, now apologize. The I apologize to everybody. I apologize to the people in the airline industries. It's just come back. Thanks for watching.